The White Stripes, an American rock duo from Detroit known for blending punk, folk, country, and Mississippi Delta blues, consisted of two people, Meg White and Jack White. Meg White, the enigmatic drummer of the White Stripes, seemingly disappeared from the public eye in 2009. What happened to her, and what's she been up to since then? In this video, we will get into every bit of detail regarding the band, why it disbanded, and where Meg White is now. We will also discuss the mystery and intrigue that surrounds Meg White. But before we get into this, hit the subscribe button and like the video. The White Stripes, a rock duo hailing from Detroit, kicked off their journey in 1997. This dynamic pair included Jack White, who took the reins on songwriting, vocals, and an array of instruments like guitar, piano, and bass, while Meg White held it down on drums, percussion, and vocals. The story of how Jack and Meg White came together to form the White Stripes is a bit of a whirlwind. They first crossed paths back in 1996 at a Detroit restaurant called Memphis Smoke, where Meg worked. At the time, Jack was a man of many bands, playing in groups like Two Star Tabernacle, The Henchman, and Goober and the Peas all around the city. But it was a fateful night in 1997 when everything changed. Jack was working on some new music, and he had this idea. He asked Meg, seemingly out of the blue, if she'd be up for playing the drums. Little did they know, this moment would spark something truly special. Jack later told Rolling Stone in 2008, When she started to play drums with me, just on a lark, it felt liberating and refreshing. There was something in it that opened me up. That was the beginning of the White Stripes, a band that would make music history. Despite their eventual divorce in 2000, they decided to keep the band alive. In the early days, they played a little trick on the press by making it seem like they were brother and sister. But eventually the truth came out, and it turned into quite the topic of discussion. The White Stripes splashed in 1999 when they signed with Sympathy for the Record Industry, a California-based label. In March of that year, they dropped the single The Big Three Killed My Baby, following their very first album, The White Stripes, on June 15, 1999. They cooked up this self-titled debut with Jack in charge of songwriting, vocals, and a truckload of instruments, while Meg handled the drums, percussion, and some vocals. The album was a heartfelt dedication to the Mississippi Delta Blues legend Sunhouse, who greatly influenced Jack. In fact, their track Cannon borrowed a piece from House's rendition of the gospel blues classic John the Revelator. But let's not forget the White Stripes' cover of House's Death Letter on their next album, De Style, which hit the scene on June 20th, 2000. They did things a little bit differently this time, recording the whole shebang on an old-school 8-track analog tape right in Jack's living room. The album got its name from a Dutch art movement and featured some snazzy album art to match. Party of Special Things to Do followed in December of 2000, a 7-inch vinyl treat with some experimental blues rock by Captain Beefheart. Things got even more exciting in 2001 when they launched White Blood Cells on July 3rd, and they were on fire. First, they put it out on Sympathy for the Record Industry, and then they hit the big leagues with a major label re-release on V2 Records the next year. Fast forward to 2003, and the duo rocked our world with Elephant, recorded over two intense weeks in London with antique gear and a duct-taped eight-track machine. It marked their major label debut, topping the charts in the UK and hitting the US top ten. The critics gave it a standing ovation, and Rolling Stone even named Jack one of the 100 greatest guitarists of all time, and Meg one of the 100 greatest drummers of all time. Their track, Seven Nation Army, ruled the Billboard rock charts, earning them a Grammy for Best Rock Song. So the White Stripes came back swinging in 2007 with their sixth album, Icky Thump. It was a big deal because it was their first album with Warner Brothers records following the closing of V2 in 2006. This album was like a rocket. It debuted at number two on the Billboard 200 and sold around 223,000 copies in its first week. Jack and Meg were on a mission to cover every nook and cranny of Canada. 
They performed in all 10 provinces, plus Yukon, Nunavut, and Northwest Territories. Jack put it like this, from the ocean to the permafrost. A real Canadian adventure. And there was a special show in Glace Bay, Nova Scotia, where Canadian fiddler Ashley McIsaac joined them. It turned out Jack and Ashley were distant relatives. And that's not all. Jack found out that he was related to another Canadian fiddle player, Natalie McMaster. Talk about keeping it in the family. But their tour wasn't just about big arenas. They surprised fans with secret shows, from a bowling alley in Saskatoon to a Winnipeg transit bus. They even had a one-note show on George Street in St. John's, Newfoundland. In South Haven, Mississippi, just before their last show, Meg dropped a bombshell on Jack. She said, this is the last White Stripe show. And she meant it. Not just the last show of the tour, but the last one, period. It was a tough call. Shortly after, they canceled 18 more tour dates due to Meg's struggle with acute anxiety. The next day, they delivered another blow by canceling the rest of their 2007 UK tour dates. Meg was struggling with some anxiety issues, and it was clear that they needed to take a step back. While Meg took some time out of the spotlight, Jack kept himself busy by working with other artists. But Meg did make a brief appearance in June of 2008 during a Detroit show with one of Jack's bands, The Rackenters. It was a small glimpse of hope for fans. Jack shed some light on what caused Meg's anxiety in an interview with Music Radar. It was a mix of super short pre-tour rehearsal time made even shorter by the birth of Jack's son and a crazy globe-trotting touring schedule. Jack said, I just came from a Rackenters tour and went right into that, so I was already full speed. Meg had come from a dead halt for a year and went right back into that madness. Despite the challenges, Jack had a plan. He announced that the band was gearing up for a seventh album, set to drop by the summer of 2009. There was even a live appearance on the last episode of Late Night with Conan O'Brien in February of 2009, where they performed We're Going to Be Friends. It was a touching moment for fans who had missed seeing them on stage. Meg also appeared alongside Jack in the 2009 documentary It Might Get Loud. And there was more good news for fans when a documentary about their Canadian tour titled The White Stripes Under the Great White Northern Lights premiered first at the Toronto International Film Festival in September of 2009. The film, directed by Emmett Malloy, gave fans a behind-the-scenes look at their summer 2007 tour across Canada, complete with live concert footage. The duo even made an appearance at the film's premiere in Toronto. Before the movie started, they shared their love for Canada and explained why they chose to debut their film in the city. But as time passed, there was silence on the White Stripes front. Two years went by with no new releases or news. Then, on February 2nd, 2011, the band dropped another bombshell. They announced on their official website that they were calling it quits. But the silver lining was that it wasn't due to health problems or creative differences. They wanted to preserve what was beautiful and special about the band. But let's talk about why May kind of vanished from the scene for a while. Between May of 2009 and July of 2013, Meg White's life took a turn. She got hitched to guitarist Jackson Smith. Their wedding wasn't a grand affair. It was a cozy ceremony held right in Jack White's own backyard in Nashville, Tennessee. Love was definitely in the air. Meg has been open about her battle with acute anxiety. She's described herself as very shy, and she's not one to talk a lot. She once said, the more you talk, the less people listen. And she had a point. Things got a bit overwhelming for Meg, especially after they had to cancel some tour dates in 2009. Jack White shed some light on her personality, describing her as a very shy girl, a very quiet and shy person. Going from zero to a hundred in the fast-paced world of rock and roll can be a lot to handle. So they decided to take a break to recharge. Fast forward to 2023. In February, the spotlight briefly shone on Jack White and the prolific Meg White. Their garage band had snagged an official Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nomination. However, with fame comes its fair share of criticism. 
On March 13th, ex-journalist Lachlan Markey unleashed a mean tweet looking at Meg's performances, labeling them terrible and sh**. He even pondered how much better the White Stripes might have been with a different drummer. Ouch. Jack White wasn't having any of it. On March 15th, he fired back on Instagram. He posted a snap of Meg White doing her thing on the iconic peppermint swirled drum set, accompanied by a poem about living without regrets. He didn't hold back, calling out demons, cowards, and vampires out for blood. And when that journalist took a jab at Meg, Jack's ex-wife, he didn't hold back. He sternly advised, keep my ex-husband's ex-wife's name out of your f***ing mouth. Hm, that pretty much settled the score. Meg, who deals with acute anxiety, responded calmly to all the fuss. She's been through this before and asked, oh, that again? When she went viral in Ellie's June through July edition through an unnamed female friend. And with that said, let's give it a wrap. But before signing off, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. See you again with another exciting video.